and welcome to another episode of FUBAR. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the new AWS Managed Grafana service. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post videos every week. So let's get started. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you all know that Grafana is one of the most popular open source technologies that are out there. It helps you to create observability dashboards for your applications. It uh, has this kind of pluggable data uh, source model where you can just start putting different sources for your uh, observability dashboards from different clouds, different time database series, different monitoring vendors. So basically, if you're a developer, you might have been working with Grafana to centralize all the application um, monitoring data from multiple data sources. I was using it a lot in my previous life and I always uh, really like it. But the problem with Grafana is that if you are in a serverless world, like I was in my late last projects and also in when I was running my own consultancy and now that I try to avoid launching instances so you need to uh, install it and manage and uh, do kind of all the configuration for it. It's tough. Uh, configuring Grafana, installing it and maintaining it's a lot of work and that's not the value of Grafana. So again, we go back to not reinventing the wheel and try to provide uh, the most value for our customers. In uh, last reinvent in 2020, AWS launched the AWS Managed Grafana service. And this was done in collaboration with the Grafana Labs. So this is a joint venture between uh, AWS and the Grafana Labs, where they work together to launch this service. So now you might be wondering, what kind of features does uh, this managed Grafana provide? Well, basically everything that Grafana has is a managed instance by AWS. So that's uh, the same, but let's look at the management and the operational part. So basically when you're using the managed Grafana service, uh, this will take care of managing, provisioning, setup, scaling, upgrading, security patching, all these type of things of the Grafana installation. So you just create a workspace and you can trust that the latest and shiniest Grafana is running in the backend. Then uh, you can uh, have super easy ways to integrate your managed Grafana to uh, CloudWatch, Elasticsearch, X-Ray, IoT sidewise, time streams, and the new Prometheus service as well. So in this way, it's so simple to create the uh, data source. And this works in a way that basically all your AWS uh, services that I mentioned inside your account or your organizations can uh, be a data source from Grafana in a super easy way. You don't need to do any crazy configuration because if you have done it in the past, you know that configuring these data sources can be very uh, hard and, and time consuming. Also, uh, this Grafana managed service can connect to other third-party data services like Datadog, Splunk, ServiceNow, New Relic, uh, and you just need to update the Grafana version to the Grafana Enterprise using the marketplace through the AWS console. And that's basically a revenue for the Grafana Labs. This is an open source project, but they have this paid version and you can also get it through uh, this new managed Grafana. One of my favorite parts of this is all the security features and how it integrates with the AWS organization. So basically you define your Grafana workspace uh, in one account inside your AWS organizations, and then you can access all the different uh, data sources in all your accounts and in all your regions within that organization. And it's very simple for managing your users that can access the Grafana you will be using the Amazon single sign on, so you can use the users that you define there and they will be using the same password and identifier that they use everywhere else. So that's super nice. We will see a demo in a second on how to set up this and you will see how simple it is. 
Another cool thing of this uh, new launch is all the security building capabilities. It's basically, as I said, using the single sign-on. It's uh, also CloudTrail will be uh, used for auditing the access. So you will be having all the information in your CloudTrail and basically you can define all the permissions. You have different levels of users like administrators and viewers for uh, being able to manage and, and change the Grafana dashboard or just look at it. So that's super nice. And you might be wondering now, how much this cost? Well, as all these new managed services, there are no upfront uh, payment in uh, using the service. You will pay for your users, the ones that are active. So if you have in your active directory and you configure that they can access Grafana, I don't know, 100 users, but only two of them use the service, then you will be paying for those two that use the service that month. So if they don't, uh, if they have access, but they never logged in, you're not paying for it. So it's like Cognito in a way that is only the active users that month that you are paying for. So that's super neat. Uh, maybe you have a big organization, but at the end of the day, it's the same three or four persons that are using that service. So that's pretty cool. Manage Grafana is under a preview. It's an open preview, but you can get access to it by filling in a form. I will leave you in the description box. You can go and check the form and ask for uh, permission to get access to it. Usually these previews ask for all your information because they might want to get feedback on how you use the service and try to improve it as time goes by. So now let's go into the console and see how you can use this managed Grafana, how you can create a workspace and how you can create some dashboards. So after you get access for the preview, you will be seeing the managed Grafana in your AWS console and you can basically get into the service as you will get into any other AWS service. And the first thing you want to do is to create a workspace and here you just will define your workspace and this is um, basically a Grafana server. Nothing fancy here, they're called workspace. You can have many of them uh, depending if you want to segregate your, uh, I don't know, Grafana usage by application or by area or whatever. Remember, in Grafana you have dashboards, so you might have multiple dashboards to have different uh, visibility on your organization, so you might only need one workspace. So the first thing you need to do is just enter a name for this work phrase, as always. I'm always very good at naming things. And then you need to define your SSL. If you don't have SSO configured, you will be prompted with um, kind of step-by-step -step on how to get started with SSO, and then you will be able to continue with the workspace creation because you need to have that enabled. Then I will pick the service manager because it's easier. That's all handled by AWS, but you can always create your IAM roles to give the right permissions, exact permissions for uh, Grafana Workspace to access your account. And then when you click next, the next thing you need to do is to find what are the data sources. You can choose them all, or you can choose the ones that you're using. I will just choose X-Ray and CloudWatch, and those then will be available right away in my Grafana Workspace, so I can start working with them. The more you add, the more you will have available. So add them all or add what? <laughs> Then Grafana also comes with notifications, so you can enable them. Uh, basically, you will receive uh, messages in your SNN, so you can define that, and that's super simple, but I will not um, use them in this demo. Then after everything is configured, we can create the workspace. It's as simple as that. And just click next, and then wait for the workspace to get created. I will fast forward until the workspace is created so we can start working on the users. Now the workspace is created so we can basically assign a user or assign a group from our SSO. So I will be doing that. I will assign a user, my own user, the only one I have in this account. And then I will see it in the user page. And there you can see that the user type is viewer or uh, and I can make it admin. So it's good to have one admin so they can change the dashboards and play with it. So that's why I did it. But if you have multiple users, just have some admin, some of yours, and that's it. Then you click in the link and you will be moved into your Grafana workspace. You uh, log in with the SSO and then voila, 
you're inside the Grafana workspace. Now in here, it looks very familiar. If you are uh, familiar to using Grafana, you can then basically go to the AWS uh, logo and there you can start working with the data sources that you give permissions to. So we go there and we uh, see that we have the list of all data sources and we can work with CloudWatch, for example. I will configure the CloudWatch for North Virginia, that is the region I've been um, using. In this case, I have been creating a Lambda that is being having some traffic so we can see something in the dashboard. And that's kind of the only thing you need to do to the data source. Then go to the AWS dashboards and there you will see a lot of pre-configured dashboards so you can create your own uh, but if you want to start from somewhere you can start from these ones there is the ec2 evs lambda cloudwatch logs and rds i will be uh, importing the lambda one so i can see what is going on in my lambda world now i go to the dashboards and i go to the managed page and there I can see that there is uh, the Lambda dashboard that I just imported and we can see that there is some kind of traffic already because I have been having a Lambda running around. I can adjust the uh, time where we can see the, the log. So this is something very nice from Grafana. I can adjust the uh, frequency where uh, the period is coming from. I can define if I give access to all the regions, which region I want to filter for. And you can see these are basic dashboards from Lambda. We can see more uh, details. We can add panels as well with more information and also for our custom metrics if we do have. Now I will add a new panel and I will add a panel for API Gateway. So API Gateway doesn't have a custom dashboard that I can import. So I'm going to select my data source. Then I will give that I want from the metrics. I will select again the region. They can be all the regions or I will you can be more specific. Then you can select the namespace and here I'm going to say API Gateway and I will select the metric and in this case it's just the count on how many um, uh, requests there have been done in the API Gateway and we can see it here I can change the name to something and then I can save this. So now we have this in our AWS Lambda dashboards but I will need to uh, save it as something else because this is one of those dashboards that is managed by Grafana and we don't want to, we cannot overwrite it. So when I uh, save this, it will ask me to put a different name on it. Another uh, thing you can do is also work with the CloudWatch logs. For that, you also create a panel and instead of designing like CloudWatch metrics, you put CloudWatch logs and there you can write queries on the logs using the CloudWatch Insights. So that's something really nice. And you can save those queries into your Grafana and have a visibility over that. So that's something I just wanted to show because that's pretty cool. Choose the log group and write those queries. So then in Grafana, you can do everything as you are used to. As you know, Grafana basically is just installed on AWS and managed by AWS, but the rest doesn't change much besides that importing of the data sources. So you can also import existing um, dashboards into Grafana if you want to and, and get them on AWS. That was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you would like me to go into the depths of some other reinvent launches, let me know. I don't think I will be covering a lot of reinvent launches in this YouTube channel because, well, we already have a lot of uh, reinvent content out there and there's been a lot of recaps and things like that. But if you would like me to do a more uh, formal recap or you would like me to, I don't know, do a recap at all about some of the services or go more in depth in some particular launch that I, is kind of serverless or developer oriented, let me know. I will be making maybe a couple more of these uh, deep dive videos, but then I will move on to a totally different topic. So that's it for today. I hope you have a great day and I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao, ciao.